This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this geometric pattern using Inkscape. So I'll go ahead and get started here with Inkscape. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons that I've designed, I'll leave a link to that information in the description of the video. So we're first going to make sure we set up our documents so that we're all working with a similar view and with similar settings. So I'm going to go to File, Document Properties. Oops, let me try that again. Document Properties. I'm going to set the display units to pixels and I'm going to turn off the visibility of the page border. And then we can close out of that. And up here where it says enable snapping, we want that turned on. And right here where it says snap cusp nodes, we want that enabled as well. And then we'll go to view, make sure we have custom selected, zoom into one at one to one. And then I'm going to open up the align and distribute menu with this button right here. We're going to want last selected chosen from that drop down. And then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button there. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw a, um, a polygon. So we'll come over to the stars and polygons tool. We're going to want polygon selected, six corners, rounded. We want that set to zero. Randomized. We also want that set to zero. And then I'm just going to come over here to the canvas and hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag to create our polygon. And make sure you have a position so that the corners are going vertically like that. We don't want it sitting flat. We want the corners going vertically up and down like that. And then we can go ahead and let go of it. I'm going to bring the opacity of that down about in half. Then I'll grab the select tool. I'm just going to make this a little smaller. You could do that yourself if you want. Uh, you could hold control and shift and just grab one of the arrows to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this object by hitting control D on the keyboard and I'm going to snap. I'm going to take this bottom left hand corner and snap it to this top left hand corner just like that. So those two are intersecting with, the, with each other like that. And I'm going to create another duplicate of this by hitting control D and I'm going to snap this one over here. I'm going to snap the top right onto the bottom of this node right here. So we end up with something like that. And then I'll just take this original polygon and I'll snap it right there so that we have these three separate polygons attached to each other. And then I'll duplicate this one more time by hitting Control D. And I'll take this corner and just snap it onto this corner so we have it sitting there like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this polygon again by hitting Control D. Hold Shift, click on the top one and go to Path intersection and then I'm going to do that again with the other one over here path intersection duplicate it actually for this last one we don't have to duplicate it we can just hold shift and click on the other polygon and go to path um, path intersection and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make these three different colors for now so we can see uh, that there's clearly a difference between those three different objects right there what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag over all three of those and I'm going to duplicate them by hitting Control D. And I'm going to flip them vertically with this button right here that says Flip Selected Objects Vertically. And then I'm going to take this bottom left corner right here and just snap it onto this top left corner, just like that. And now we can click off of that to deselect everything. We kind of have these two merging together like that. We're going to have a duplicate of this green object right here. We can just take that and press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And then what I want to do is I want to take this red shape and then hold shift and click on the other blue shape and flip that vertically like that and then go to path union and that's going to combine them together into one object and then I'll just hold shift and click on the green object and go to path difference and that's exactly the shape we're looking for right there. So I'm going to create a duplicate of this shape and replace it with this red shape is right now. So I'm going to hit control D bring this over here. I'm going to click on it a second time to get the rotation handles and with the rotation handles I'm going to hold control and grab one of the corner arrows and just rotate it around until it matches the shape or the position actually of that red shape right there and just snap it in there. Now we can take the red shape press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. We can take this one we'll do that again we'll hit control D to duplicate it and for this one we don't have to rotate it we could just flip it horizontally so I'll just click this button up here that says flip selected objects horizontally and then just snap it over the blue object right there and then we can take the blue object and get rid of it. And now what I'm going to do now is bring the opacity, grab these three objects and bring the opacity all the way up and color them in whatever color you'd like them to be. So follow along, following along with the, uh, the thumbnail, the tutorial, for this shape I used like a, um, like a faded blue or purple, something like that. For this shape I used a faded red. You can use whatever color you'd like. Just pick three good contrasting colors. You should be fine. It doesn't really matter which colors. Uh, and then for this one over here, I'll use like a cream 
like a cream color, something like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag over all of these and I'm going to hit control D. And if you notice, these objects all snap into each other and fit nicely. And I'm going to keep duplicating them to show you as an example. I'm going to create duplicates going all around. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I'm going to create duplicates going all around. Let me just make sure. Okay. Control D and another one. Just like that. And this can go on infinitely. You can go ahead and, and, and duplicate these shapes and snap them into each other over and over and over again. But what if we want to just make one object that we can repeat going on a vertical and a horizontal axis, kind of like you would for like the, the background of a web page? What if we wanted to make something like that? That wouldn't really work with something like this here. We need something that's in a perfect square or rectangle. So to create um, a, a rectangle out of this object that you can repeat over and over again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group all of these together. First of all, make sure you have one here in the center and then you have one extra object going around the outside of all of them. So we want two, four, six, and then seven. Number seven's in the middle. So once we have that, I'm just going to group this all together. Uh, that, that's the group button. You could hit control G to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the, uh, the rectangles tool and I'm going to snap to this corner right here. And then just click and drag to start creating a rectangle and snap to this bottom uh, node right there. And let me just make this a different color so you can see it. I'll make that black and I'll bring the opacity of that down about in half. Actually, wrong one. There we go. And then I'll grab the select tool. And I'm going to take this right arrow right here and just bring that all the way out so it extends beyond the graphic. And I'll do the same thing right here. And what I want to do now is trim off the ends of this rectangle in reference to where these two nodes are. So let me grab the Bezier pen. You could just press B on the keyboard as a shortcut. I'm going to snap to this node up here. Hold Control, bring that line straight through. Click again, and then just bring the shape, finish the line up going around the outside. And I'll do the same thing over here. Hold Control, bring the line straight down, back around to the starting point. And then I will grab the Select tool, hold Shift, click on the other shape so we have both of those newly drawn shapes selected, and go to Path, Union, and then I can hold shift and click on our black rectangle right there and go to path difference. And what I'm going to do now is with this shape selected, I'm going to hold shift and click on our polygon objects and go to object, clip, set. And what we have here now is an object that we can duplicate over and over again. And it'll create this repeated background. You can go ahead and just keep deleting, uh, duplicating it over and over again. Or I, I know if like when you make a website or something and you set an image as the, uh, the website's background, it takes a single image and repeats it over and over again. That's what you can do with this background, with these objects here. Now let me show you another way you can do this instead of uh, repeating them over and over again, duplicating them manually. What you could do is select the one object and go to Edit, Clone, Create Tiled Clones. And let me grab that menu. It went to the other screen. Here we go. And under the, uh, the Tiled Clones menu, we're going to select Width and Height, select Pixels. And for this, uh, I'm going to use like 1920. Or maybe I'll make something a little larger. I'll make 4,000 by 3,000. Pretty much set this to however big you want your background image to be. So for this, let's say I'm going to do 4,000 by 2,500 pixels. And go ahead and click Create. You may have to give it a minute to, uh, to, to work and do its thing. It's creating a bunch of objects. We can close out of that and you can see it created all of those different objects. So let me actually delete some of those. That's a bit too many. Let's say this is the object. Let's say this is the background you wanted here. Well, I'm not sure if you could see in the video, but on my screen there's clearly a seam. There's like a white seam running through the areas of the graphic where the different objects are. And that technically shouldn't be there, but it, it, it is because it's just a flaw with vector graphics. I've noticed this happens not just with Inkscape, but with Adobe Illustrator as well. It's just some kind of mathematical problem. And usually when you export it, you get those seam lines as well. A little trick to get rid of those seam lines, you could just click and drag over all of those and just duplicate them. And then you can just duplicate them another time. And after you've made about two or three copies and you zoom in, you can see those seam lines should be gone. 
Now, that's not the best solution in the world, but it's pretty much the only solution I know of to get rid of those seam lines when you want to create a seamless uh, background that you could repeat over and over again with something like Inkscape. So that's how you can go about creating this design using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.